Hey there, welcome back to the table. So I have a strict hard stop and I have an alarm that's actually going to go off to remind me of that. But um, I do have at least an hour to, to play here. So let's, let's go ahead and try to continue. Um, a viewer pointed out something to me that it's in the rulebook. They always are in the rulebook, but I flat out missed it. Right here, the anatomy of a bot card. When you see this little symbol here, that's an action card you're supposed to discard. I don't know why, but I always just assumed it was like, okay, this is an administrative action for the bot. But, um, so what that uh, essentially means, and I've already gone through and discarded some cards. Um, let's see, there was an example right here. So when the bot played this unrest card, Poland, they discarded a diplomacy card. So we came over to the Diplomacy card, and there's two of them actually discarded. There's two cards in this pile. They are both Spy Network, ironically. But, um, uh, so we have two discards here now because of the bots. Now, this is critically important, and it may not be very apparent to you, but let me explain why it's critically important. And it's critically important for a player like Castile. So, it never remembers my, uh, player color. So the reason it's critically important for Castile is we now have a marriage and alliance and I need a subjugation card to vassalize them. Um, and then I need another subjugation card to annex them. So then I can form Spain. It's one of my missions. It scores me quite a few victory points. It's a very important objective for me. Um, the subjugation card, as we talked about, there's six of them in this deck, and as you can see, there's 31 cards. I think there's six. Let's check. Yeah, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So, I need those cards. And one of the ways is the brute force it. So every time we're between rounds, I can just grab three of these diplomacy cards and just keep grabbing diplomacy cards and not grab anything else, which um, I've not been doing so far in this playthrough. And I was saying that that's one of my, um, my, my mistakes. However, there is a little nuance in here and it's starting to make me appreciate the game more because people are complaining about this, by the way. They're saying that it sort of breaks the game a little because Castile is so heavily dependent on these cards, and so now you're relying on RNG to get what you want. Um, the designers have made a very valid point that if they made it any easier, then you would always just diplomatically annex everything, the whole game, and there would be no warfare at all. Excellent point. I actually, as much as I want to argue with it, I can't, because they're right. I would just diplomatically annex everything. The, the video game actually lets you do it both ways. You can diplomatically annex and you can military. And it's it works beautifully in the video game because sometimes it is, like for example in the case of Scotland, it is easier to just attack Scotland than to try to diplomatically annex them. And, and it has to do with, um, you know, the way the video game does the rules, but those rules are so complicated that you couldn't replicate that in a board game very easily. Um, and then, of course, if you're France, you're diplomatically annexing a lot of stuff. And the same with uh, the HRE. Okay, so how do we get around this problem? Well, they designed something in here um, that's actually quite brilliant, but it's not obvious at first. And so when people are making that complaint, I'm included, right? I have that complaint, and I was, like, agreeing with it. Um, there is more to this game that's sophisticated that actually balances out a little bit better. And here's why. Well, first of all, the bots are putting cards in the discard pile. That is an excellent thing. And as you know, I haven't been doing that. So the whole first round, we didn't do that. Um, so big mistake on my part there. But if another player happened to have one, if you're playing player to player, they're going to discard them as they play them too. And so it's like, oh man, I needed that card. So why did he get all the luck? And I didn't. So he's going to win because he had better RNG than me. Well, there is another rule. So let me get in here, and we're going to go to our actions. 
and this is going to be one of our basic actions and it is the change national focus so in this action basically you get to do it once per round and so you put a cube one to show that you used it once per round so you can't abuse this but um, you can take one monarch power uh, increase one more monarch power. So basically you could take a cube from let's say you needed diplomatic cubes you can take one cube from military and one cube from admin and move it over to the diplomatic so you could steal a cube from your other two um, this is um and it's uh, you can increase it by up to two so um, and by moving a maximum of one from the other two power pools this is purely optional and another reason you may want to do this is you may not want to move your cubes around right here you can discard three action cards from your hand add them to the discard pile after completing this action right then draw one card fewer than you discarded so this is a nice way where we could actually try to draw cards uh, then you may pay one cube and two ducats to pick one of the new cards from the top five discards. So instead of drawing from the top of the deck blindly, you can make sure that one of those cards that you draw is from the discard pile, the top five of the discard pile. So so let's say the, the bot takes their turn and they, they cause one of those action cards to get discarded and it's the subjugate card. And we're like, oh man, that's the card I need. Well, I can come over here, do change national focus when it's my turn, and as long as it's still in the top five discards, I can pay one cube from any of my monarch powers and two ducats, and I can take that subjugate card and have it as my own. And then I can, you know, do what I need to do to complete my mission. Now, if I play a subjugate card, it is going to be in the top five discards, but I have to wait until the round ends and I get a fresh new round. And if it's somehow still there, I could do it again. Now, I know there's some logic about reshuffling those cards um, at the end of the round. I think they do preserve the top five discards, though, even if they get reshuffled. Um, so the top five discards matter, is what I'm trying to say, um, exactly for this reason. And this is like... And it's subtle because even though it's clearly in the rules, you know, the light bulb doesn't go off right away. Like when you're when you're learning the game and playing the game, you don't realize, oh my gosh, if I'm playing Castile, I need to really, you know, use this change national focus in combination with, you know, other tricks. And then you get to manipulate that diplomacy deck and get that subjugation card that you're looking for. So this is dunning upon me as well. And um and so uh, like if I were to redo my playthrough for all of you this would be something I would be talking about like from day one um, and now here we are you know we're already in round two and now I'm finally talking about it so it, because my light bulb finally finally went off so I hope that's helpful for all of you um, this trick of grabbing discards I think it would work for any player it's not just for Castile it's just that Castile really needs it now we have a card that we played it's in the discard here so there's two cards in this discard pile. Look at this one. This lets you research an idea for just two cubes. This is a fantastic one. You could research an idea for a three cube discount. And it does cost you two admin cubes, which, you know, you could argue, okay, well, you're still spending cubes, Jeff. But um, the admin cubes aren't really used for much in this game. In, um, in the video game, administrative points are valuable um, but here there are only a very few limited actions that actually use admin cubes so this is a perfect use for them and so and then you score an extra victory point uh, but you do have to have a stability of zero or better to do it um, but that's an amazing card and there's a part of me that's like you know what I would like to get that card back or if I was another player I would be like you know what this is worth doing to get that card because I'm going to save cubes in the long run and I'm going to be able to go grab one of these ideas which are going to be valuable to me. All right, so because we're Castile, we shouldn't do it because we need to save our change national focus for that subjugate card if it were ever to come out. I guess if we're nearing the end of the round, then maybe we would do it because that's still a wonderful card to have in your hand and so we can grab it now and keep it in our hand for next turn. Okay, um, 
I think that's it. There was some comments on the Discord channel. Uh, some of the people there are not nearly as nice. But uh, uh, one second, I'm getting a phone call. Okay, I am back. I was on a phone call for a very long time. So I think I was just in the middle of saying, yeah, it didn't have as great of experience on Discord this time, but that's okay. People are people, and I get a lot of nasty comments on this on this YouTube channel as well. Um, so uh, we're going to continue on, and I believe I left a marker indicating whose turn it was. Oh, here it is. It is England's turn. So let's go ahead and discard this marker. Alright, so what's England doing? We got this. Uh, they still have one more siege to do. You can see they need to siege this town. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, wrong list. So they're going to go to siege here. And let's resolve that. Siege hostile provinces is up to three tax value. Spend one bot cube per tax value sieged. Uh, prefer an old corn, da da da. If they're at war or has a town with unrest on it or this in the area, remove. The answer is yes. So then it's just end turn. Um, but this is after. Yeah, this is after we siege. Okay, so when it comes to rebels, like normally you occupy a city and then during the peace phase, you know, you settle it. But with rebels, you just remove. That's all that happens. And um, I just need to find the, the marker here. And of course, Deal with some off-camera stuff that's going on. All right. So this marker goes back here. So the rebel thing goes off, but see, there's this unrest marker that's still there. That doesn't go away. Just all you, all we did was the rebels basically took control of the town, and we just kicked them out of the town. Had we gone to the peace phase with the rebels in control of that town, there's a chance that they may have been liberated, and that's not bad. That's not good for us the whole liberation thing. So um, uh, that's why, and I say us, I mean the bot. So that's why the bot is prioritizing this stuff. Okay, so if we go back to the uh, chart, that's why it's asking, is there at least a town with this on it? And there is. And I got to pause one second. So <laughs> we're 13 minutes in this video and I've gotten called twice. <laughs> so my apologies there. Um, uh, so at war or has a town with a unrest marker um, the answer is yes so the only difference that this question is really asking is whether the army stays on the map and remember because it's a bot and the army sort of invisibly transports around and this bot um, is keeping his army here um, because of the unrest that's there so if they ever get an unrest action there's actually multiple opportunities to get rid of unrest and you might argue, okay, well, they would rather be up here. Sure. Um, but the whole gist of all this is uh, is that... And then we also have the issue of pirates for them. So England has a lot going on. And when you go back up to here, you know, are they under attack by enemies or rebels? That's no longer true. So then is there an army on the map board and can siege? That's no longer true. Colonism is no longer true. The pirate thing is actually not on here. But I bet when we get to naval action... Like, if they ever draw a navy card, then it would be. So, now, the interesting thing about them doing these actions... Um, so, they were supposed to be spending cubes, and I haven't been um, very diligent about that. So, they defended twice. There was two rebels, and then they also did a siege where it's one per tax income. And so, the siege here is a regular city. And all I'm trying to say is that three cubes should be over here. Uh, one for the first rebels, one for the second, and then one for the siege. And then that should uh, cover it. And um, that ends their turn. So now we move to Austria. Okay, so Austria. Now, one thing that's tricky about Austria, and I don't talk about it as much as I probably should, is there's this HRE thing. <clears throat> and the HRE 
actually does what's the right word? I mean it's they, they get extra cubes because they're the HRE Emperor, they're gonna get three extra cubes, right? Um But there's there's rules with the HRE. So I mean it's really uh if any of these things happen, then they gain one and lose one. And so far, we've been lucky that none of the wars, or anything about wars, have occurred inside of HRE territory. Um, the tricky part about HREs is, um, let's say Poland declares war on, like, Bohemia. Well, the, the HRE emperor can then declare war on Poland. And in some cases, they have to. For when the Caldo Alliance happens, they have to join, or otherwise they lose the Emperor status. Because that's the whole point of them being the Emperor, is they're supposed to protect the Empire. So, there's a lot of that going on. And then the part that I'm a little fuzzy on, I'll confess, I have some fuzziness, um, is the liberation. Um, so right here, unlawful occupants who currently own a province in the 1444 setup, it's Burgundy, Venice, and Denmark. So, um, I may have been screwing up their turn because, now let's get back to Austria here. When we come over here and right here, the Bot Emperor. If a Bot Realm holds the Emperor of the HRE, treat the increase and decrease as you would will always come to the defense of subjects. They're already at war. Defending the HRE, they'll accept the call to arms. Uh, a bot emperor will also defend member states that are attacked by other HRE members. Imperial manpower is not used when the emperor... Uh, imperial election. So bot realms that are members of the HRE lose a cube when the defending the HRE gets activated. This does not apply if they're already at war. That's fine. That None of that's new. So the tricky part here is when would the bot declare war to take back HRE land? And I don't see that anywhere in here. I think that's part of the, the thing that's going through my head. Uh, it says that they're going to defend the HRE, but they're not going to necessarily take back the HRE. So, um, and if I confused you, I apologize, but um, <clears throat> the HRE is all this land, and Denmark right here has some of it. That's the reason why Denmark is in violation. They're an unlawful occupant. So this land belongs to either, I don't know, Hamburg or Lubeck or Pomerania or like it's land that that was originally part of the HRE then over here Burgundy has land see this that land belongs to the HRE and then uh, Venice has land right here that belongs to the HRE so um, these countries or these realms if you will they're not members of the HRE they don't participate in the election process uh, etc. <clears throat> and so they're considered unlawful occupants, and there's an imperial liberation casus belli. So, um, basically, as the emperor, Austria has a cause for war to liberate those provinces. <clears throat> so that's the, um, the part here that I'm confused on. Like, if you're a player and you're playing as Austria, you have the, the turn one, bam, declare war. You could do it. Um, so what's happening here is that I'm not seeing it anywhere in the bot that they're going to to do this declare war. Now maybe when we get to the military where they actually declare war there, they might do it there. Um, and so here defending the HRE is of course a very important thing. So like if France or Poland were to declare war, you would defend them. And there's a lot of stuff going on here and we'll read this when we get there. Um, you could leave and join the HRE. Um, the religion thing uh, in the video game is a very important thing. And then the elections, also an important thing. And then it shows advanced rules, and I, I don't disagree. Um, those are definitely on the advanced side. And the emperor. So an NPR emperor starts with three, and it loses one authority whenever an area leaves, and gains one when an area is reincorporated. 
Uh, at the end of the round, we're going to roll a six-sided die, which we did. If the roll is greater than the current one by two or more, it increases. If it's less, it decreases. It stayed the same, in case you don't remember. Um, the number of units that are that defend an HRE under attack are always as follows. So this is like the, the military capacity. Uh, ever cannot be vassalized. And if it's fully annexed... Now this is for NPR. A bot is technically not an NPR. Um, that's it. That's all we have. So, um, when would a bot... I guess maybe it's got to be the military action. Uh, but right now, the bot's not that interested in liberating. They're, they're totally 100% uh, in. They're all in for defending the territories that currently exist. But, you know, the territories that are already um, taken, uh, it looks like they're, they're not interested. I can tell you in the video game, when I play as Austria, I declare war on Venice all the time. Because Venice is the one country you can pick on. Because um, if you declare war on any of these other ones, there's all kinds of uh, negative impacts to the, you know, because there's voters that vote for you, you know, and they don't like it when you, you, you know, have war within your own uh, realm. Uh, the Bohemia here is not friendly to Austria at all. Uh, Saxony is very friendly. Um, Switzerland, of course, is not friendly. Um, but, uh, yeah, this area... Some of these are friendly. Like, these are actually separate areas. And, uh, yeah, Bohemia is a very large... They're almost as large as you are. And I very often end up in wars with them defensive, where they're attacking me. But Hungary is usually a very strong ally, and you could usually get a personal union with them, and then all their lands get inherited. And as you know in history, you know, Vlad the Impaler and all that stuff was the Austro-Hungarian, you know, empire there against the Ottomans, who several times, you know, marched into uh, Austria-Hungary and, um, you know, laid siege and had different levels of success depending on when and where uh, they went. Um, but they were always beaten back, the Ottomans. <clears throat> At some point, they would get beaten back. Um, so, uh, and then up here in the north, uh, Brandenburg is a very fun one to play if you play the video game. And uh, they also like to ally with Austria. These guys over here uh, usually don't. Um, they got their own thing going on, and you can even see that these are really the Dutch, but they're under control by other people. But this, you know, there's a Dutch um, revolution just waiting to happen there. And Burgundy is uh, is very interesting. They start the game very powerful, but they uh, their line of successions eventually dry up, and somebody ends up inheriting them. Um, and then sometimes there's even a disputed succession, and, and they always are the source of wars. So, anyways, not to get into all this. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, Austria. Um, after all that dialogue, uh, they're drawing a card, aren't they? They're not doing anything. I, I just wanted to stop and make sure, like, should I be doing something? You know, because they are the Emperor, and you would think they would need to do something. But right now, we're just humming. So let's flip this card. All right, so they got an unrest, which I don't think is going to happen. And uh, the one cube is going to go into the expansion. So you can see they got quite a bit of um, focus going on. Uh, all across the board. And then right here, this is the new thing I was telling you about. So um, an administrative card gets discarded. So I'm going the wrong direction. So this card is going to get discarded. So Man of the Church is now in the discard pile. Okay, um, and then this goes out of the game. Well, out of the deck is what I meant to say. All right. Um, that concludes our turn. Sorry, I had to get a drink. Okay, Poland has spent more cubes than they have. And I really feel like we shortchanged them cubes or something. I, it just seems like they were so low on cubes. But, um... If you go back up to the beginning here, uh, they only refresh seven cubes. They must have spent everything they had last time. And right here, you can see four plus three is seven. 
So um, in their case, they spent more than they have. So we got to come over here and make sure. So this is true. Are they at war? No. So then it comes up here. Have they picked an event? Nope. So they're going to go and do the event, which makes sense. So has an event already taken an event action? No. And um, so they're going to roll a die. So let's do that. Wherever I got that die hidden. Here we go. All right, we rolled a six, which I know means something. I'll look it up in a second. Um, so here's our events. Um, these, these are interesting, uh, <laughs> especially for Poland to take. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's get back to regularly scheduled programming here. We rolled a six. So is their own event revealed? I don't think so. I'm going to check, but I'm assuming no. Are they at war with opponent whose event is revealed? No. They're going to pick the leftmost and gain one cube if uh, the duck gets on the event. So let's make sure that none of these are theirs. This one's an Austrian one, and this one's definitely not there. So they're going to take this one. So I'm going to take these coins off, and actually the coins go on these other cards. This card is what they're taking. And just because I'm here, we're going to go ahead and resolve this right now. So the comet sighted, <laughs> that one always cracks me up. <laughs> Even in the video game, the comet sighted sucks. <laughs> um, all players lose stability. Yeah, <laughs> all you, <laughs> you jerks. <laughs> um, all right, um, that cracks me up. They put that in here. It, it, yeah, in the video game, it's it just the worst thing ever. All right, um... Before I uh, resolve the rest of this, uh, they gain a cube because there was coins on it. I don't want to forget that. And that's actually going to prolong their game because now they haven't spent more than they have. So um, sorry, one second. Sorry, that was my my dad contacting me. <laughs> All right, we um, are in the middle of getting ready to resolve this event. So let's figure it out. Uh, well, first of all, let's go back to the event and make sure. OK, so is this an opponent's event? No, it's not. We're going to resolve A on the event and then resolve any secondary effects. They do not have more than 10 cubes, so nothing else happens. All right, so what is this? The death of Charles the Bold. All PRs adjacent to Burgundy, except you, <laughs> are going to gain a cube, um, a military cube. But in this case, um, it's going, you know, for the bots, it's going to be another uh, power cube. So let's deal with that first. And this, by the way, is the, the Burgundy line of succession thing I was just telling you about. Uh, Burgundy always um, has some massive thing and it affects everybody on the game. All right, so uh, gain a cube for everybody that is next to Burgundy. So Burgundy is here, but they also have provinces up here and over here, right? So they have provinces in quite a few places. Um, One second. Okay. <clears throat> so who's next to them? Well, France is, of course. And then right now, England is. And uh, Austria is not. Because Austria is over here. Um, so that's pretty much it. The NPRs don't get cubes or anything. So we don't have to worry about, you know, any of the provinces in here, like Lorraine or whatever. Um, so France and England look like the two that are going to be impacted. And it's, it's really simple. France gets a cube and then England's going to get a cube because they don't actually get uh, military, uh, power. Um, okay. So let's keep going. They're going to do option A. I actually want to see what the second one is. 
Uh, pay two to gain an alliance with Burgundy and place two in their area. Okay. Mary of Burgundy's hand. If you have any cubes in Burgundian areas, gain a royal marriage with Burgundy and place three in their areas. They don't have anything. This is Poland. Poland's over here. So, what a worthless card for them to choose. <laughs> All right. Um, and then this bottom thing's going to happen. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and discard this. I don't know why it's... Here. Now we can discard it. Okay. Done. We put the money on. We're done there. And then here, you can see I put the event tokens up here. So they're really easy to look up now. So it's the attrition. All players that have more units in a hostile area than the total tax value of the provinces in that area lose two units of their choice there. Players with more than twice as many as the tax value lose four. The active player loses only one in total if affected by attrition. So this is... Uh, uh, we may have to look at the bot chart because I think attrition is a little different for them. But uh, for the players, this would happen. I don't have any units anywhere hostile at the moment. So if we come over to the bot chart... Oh, nope, resolved as normal. So here's the thing. After the peace treaties, I don't think anybody's anywhere hostile. The whole world is at peace right now. So no attrition occurs. That's actually probably a good time to draw that card. So we'll, we'll give them credit that they drew it there. All right, their turn's over. And... How on earth did they end up getting that card? Oh, that's right. They didn't draw a card. <coughs> um, okay, Ottomans. They still have more cubes. So I think we're just going to draw another one. Flip. And they're going to try to convert, which I think they can now do. So that's going to cost one cube. And let's pull up convert. Um, just so you know, the convert would be... Oh, hold on. I thought they... See... No, they never attack Const Constantinople. They could convert this one, though, right here. Because that's orthodox. So they can definitely convert something. So let's go check that out. Any areas with religious descent? No. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Is Catholic and all its areas are Protestant or vice versa? No. All provinces in dissenting area are owned by bot. Yes. Convert to state religion. Score two points. And end turn. All right, that was simple enough. So we're going to come over here and grab the Orthodox token. And pop it right there. And of course it's flipped over to the Muslim side. So we now have this. This is converted to Muslim now. And let's not forget their two points. Now, um, an interesting thing, and uh, JB, I know you were commenting on this. Uh, England went to negative, and I was like, you know, is it possible? Look at this right here. Negative prestige. <laughs> the, the token's right there. <laughs> it's all you had to do was just bump. <laughs> I don't know why I miss things that are so obvious sometimes, but it happens to me all the time. Okay, uh, their turn's over. Moving on to France, who has a crap ton of cubes. Holy cow. Yes, that is a real uh, unit of measure. All right, unrest or focus economy. I don't think there's any unrest in France. They're quite stable. So uh, we're going to focus, which of course is going to move it over here. That's going to cost a cube. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do they really have another one in here? This is the first time this is happening. Search. 
Um, there's Focus Political. Focus Political. I got two political ones, Politics. And there's the two Ecos. So one of these Politics was discarded for some other reason, like unrest or whatever. Um, interesting. Okay, well, we have two Economic. That triggers something. And I think what it means is they beat us to uh, the punch and they accomplished the economic mission. So, um, so the bot takes a focus action. Oh yeah, so let's go see. So they now have two or three in the focus area. The answer is yes. So the milestone matching the focus type is available, yes. So they're going to score the milestone matching focus type and then gain two cubes. So gain two cubes and score victory points as normal. Discard all cubes from the focus area and then put aside the bot card. Okay, so we did that. And all it's saying is uh, they're going to gain two cubes, but we're just going to take these two and give it to them because those were supposed to be discarded. All right, so that's done. Now, what are they saying? Um, I've got to grab a cube from them first. They accomplished the economics milestone, which is this one. So they are on here at five points. So they're going to get five points uh, for being the first one to do that. And what's awesome about these is, look, you actually get cubes for doing these or money. And I would love to be able to claim that we have some of these done, but man, I just don't, I don't have any of them. Uh, this one here, build four light chips during a single action, or have two stability or higher, man. Um, okay, so that is five points for France. One, two, three, five. All right, done. Okay, now it's back to us. We have so many things we want to do. Um, one of the things is uh, our army is completely depleted. We have all these rebels we want to get rid of. And I think that was the action I wanted to do. So I wanted to do the unrest, suppress unrest. So it's one uh, military cube per province and it does the whole province. Like, um, So what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend two cubes, whoops. So we're going to spend two cubes and um, we get to flip our two provinces. So we're going to get rid of all of our unrest. And um, it's a little annoying that I had to spend two cubes to do that because now I'm down to just one and um, I still need to, I don't have a lot of money, but I got to get my, my troops back. Uh, I'm in all kinds of problems, but um, yeah. And then uh, the other thing is, is we have a we're paying a, a military cube every time we uh, we do our uh, upkeep. So lots and lots of problems here. Um, but as long as our leader stays alive, uh, we're going to get a lot of cubes next round. And I could still do a focus and give myself military cubes, but as you know, I've been I'm trying to wait uh, in case. Um, a subjugate card comes up. So, not a very exciting turn, but a necessary one. England, I think, can finally take an action. All right, so they have convert and or focus. Um, I don't think there's anything for them to convert. Everybody's Catholic up here. Um, so we're going to give them a focus, and it's politics. And of course, that card goes away. Turnover. Now we move to Austria. Same deal. Papalkyria. They're definitely going to do this. And then you can see here, they're going to get rid of a... Uh, uh, it's going to be an administrative card. So one of these cards now gets discarded. Oh, look at this. Increased stability. Oh, 
Oh my gosh. That is a fantastic card. Very much would like to increase my stability. How many cubes do I I only have one cube left. Dang it. It'll only cost me two cubes because my stability is at minus one. Man, why can't I draw cards like that? I'm getting very jealous. I'm I'm violating the Ten Commandments. I'm envying my neighbors. Well, I'm violating one of them. <clears throat> but, uh... Alright, fair enough, you jerk. <laughs> um... Yeah, and then the Papalkyria. So Austria is going to basically get involved, and I think it's a very simple thing. But uh, are they Catholic? Yes. Is it is uncontested pet? No. No. They're going to put themselves in the leftmost, and then they're done. So let's grab one of their cubes. And the controller's over here. So we put them on the leftmost, and see, you can see there's a tie between Poland and them, and now they're the leader instead of Poland. You know, we should probably maybe do a little bit more to get involved there. Um, how do we put cubes on? I don't even see it on here as an action. I'm having a brain fart, aren't I? So only Catholics may place a cardinal. Oh, you have to play Man of the Church action cards. Ah, that's why. You gotta have this type of card. Which we don't have. Okay, yeah, fair enough. <clears throat> so, can't do anything about it. Um, that was Austria. Now we go to Poland. Who now has an equal number of cubes, so they can take another action. Diplomacy. Yep, so three of their card cubes are going away. And... There's going to be a lot of back and forth here. Do they have this plus this on any NPR? I'm pretty sure they do. It's Lithuania. And then I think they're not going to have higher tax, though. So let's check. Lithuania, they have it. Okay, so Lithuania's taxes are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, no, just 12. That's a different, a horse is pointing different direction, 12. Okay, so then the, the tax income of Poland... It's 16. So yes, it is greater. So the answer is yes. Do they have cubes greater than... No, they don't. This is what we ran into before. So they're going to select that NPR. And there's definitely free space. They're going to add two cubes in the target area. Prefer the capital. Uh, alliance is not possible. Royal marriage, not possible. They're going to add two more cubes where it hasn't been placed. And are they at peace and have six or more cubes left? No. Okay. So they're going to be, basically, they're going to be adding four cubes. So, oh. That was in the wrong spot. One, two. And these are going to go in the capital, which there is room for. Then we're going to add two more somewhere else, per the rule. And where are they going to do it? Well, it's based on... Uh, Let's see, tax base. And then alphabetical order. So let's do, we did this one before, so we're gonna do it again. There's just two more going here. All right, 
So that ends Poland's turn. And then that brings us around to uh, the Ottomans. And I'm going to have to wrap up here. So let me grab one of these tokens, put it on the Ottomans card. It'll be their turn when we get back. Thanks for watching. As always, stay awesome.